you know what, it does have those undercurrent feelings of cynicism um, and very sinister indeed. Um, you know, myself having been, uh, you know, covering hip hop, documenting it for the last 25 years, I'm no stranger to the world of hip hop beefs, as they call it. But this one is um, in, in incredibly, um, you know, dare I say, maybe even personal, but, uh, you know, for, for, for both of them, um, you know, both incredible artists in their own right um, but uh, I, I, I do I do see where um, this this beef is is, is becoming um, a lot deeper than uh, the usual you know uh, sort of rapping about cars and and, and, and money and, and women that sort of thing yes this is incredibly personal and the sort of the machismo of being better than the other I mean you know these two used to get on quite well they often yeah. referenced each other positively why did things mm -hmm. go awry? You know, uh, again, like I, like I said, you know, um, hip hop beefs are, are incredibly, um, you know, integral in uh, the um, hip hop world, in hip hop culture. Um, it's a way to, you know, showcase your uh, lyricism, uh, the wordplay, um, you know, the, the, the ability to be able to clap back at each other. And it's, it's, it's a part of being able to prove that you are, you know, one of the greatest to be able to wear the rap moniker. But I think with, with the two of them, I mean, Kendrick Lamar is an incredible artist. He's a Pulitzer Prize winning, um, you know, rapper one of the only, um, you know, hip hop artists to ever have, you know, gotten that incredible award. Um, Drake has obviously got his own uh, incredible following and, you know, the way he's sort of climbed up in, in the ranks. But this has, like you said, they, they got on, you know, for, uh, back in 20, 2011, they were both, you know, uh, appearing on each other's, um, um, you know, albums. And then Drake was having, you know, uh, Kendrick come on tour with him in 2012. And, you know, it, it comes to something as little as, um, um, a diss on a song or, you know, maybe it was someone taking it the wrong way just to trigger um, and then it can really just escalate. I think there were undercurrent possible feelings of not really liking each other but maybe just wanting to be cool in the beginning. But, um, you know, from 2011 to 2024 to a matter of between, you know, May, sort of, you know, April, May, there are diss tracks coming out per second you know, with, with, uh, with the two of them. And they are incredibly, incredibly deep, deep-seated. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, I, I, I do think that this has been an undercurrent that has been boiling for a long time. You know, I, I mean, I, I would, Maxine, talk to you a little bit about a lot of rap hip-hop. There's a lot of gendered violence, sexual sort of uh, misogyny, uh, violence, control. These are themes that are often bandied around in, in this genre, but some of these allegations that they're throwing at one another, at what point do officials start taking them seriously? You know, claims of domestic abuse, claims of underage sexual encounters. You know that it's it's it is it is so heavy, um, and and it's 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 a topic that I I don't take um, I, I take incredibly. Um, uh, how can I say personal? Because obviously, knowing what the cultural culture of hip hop is about and how important it is to um, you know for for every artist to be able to share exactly how they feel about themselves, their music, their actual narrative. Um, you know, for the rest of the world who may not understand the culture of hip hop, yes, those obvious, you know, themes of violence and misogyny uh, can be heavily threaded throughout of it. Um, with this particular one, and I think what has probably um, maybe taken my breath away a little bit, given my experience in, in documenting it, is the level of, um, you know, personal depth that they have both gone into, especially when we're sort of taking shots at families and, and children and, and, you know, not even withstanding all of the, uh, you know, sort of sexual innuendo and, and um, you know, all, all the other, you know, domestic violence, infidelity, things that we would probably talk about just amongst ourselves is, is now literally bandied, um, you know, uh, uh, out there for everybody to, to, to hear. Um, I, I, I don't believe that it is, um, you know, anything that we should be turning our 
eyes and our ears away from. But I also do implore people that, you know, who are listening to it to maybe just have a little bit of a read back on who these artists are, try to understand what the history of it is. And, you know, understand too that it, hip hop is an expression um, and it is definitely something that, um, these particular artists, this is the way that they are able to get out what they are currently feeling. Violence and obviously, you know, talking about the families, I'm definitely not about that. Um, but unfortunately, we can't really control what happens there. And I, I think uh, a lot of the time, uh, you know, the people who really win at the end of this are, you know, the music companies and, and you know, yeah. record labels. I guess. That's yeah, right. With, with because the, a lot of these, you know, a lot of these songs are, are going sort of viral almost. But I'm interested in your, as a as sort of observer and, and, and having documented mm -hmm this genre and as a woman how I understand it's part of their expression but does that not disturb you that it, it off the, the lyrics are often you know so gender violenced and and, and yeah. prejudicial towards women Oh, absolutely. I mean, as as much as I, I respect, you know, um, like you know, most of these artists, especially from the era in which I sort of came about within my own career within within hip hop, um, there is there is no way that I, I sit there and I take it lightly. Uh, a lot of the time, it is kind of hard to listen to as well. Uh, there have been many artists in my career that I've interviewed or that I've been asked to interview, and and at times I've actually said no to to interviewing them because I've I haven't you know appreciated. Uh, the way in which they've spoken about women or the way in which they've, you know, uh, handled certain situations, you know, dealing with, you know, underage fans that they've had, you know, sort of coming into, you know, uh, into their kind of space. So I've, I've felt that I have had to take that kind of power in the, in the positions that we're in, especially as women in the media. Um, whether you like a music genre or not, or whether you, um, you know, you're, you're a fan of it or not, there is a point where you go, enough is enough. And, uh, you know, family, children, women oftentimes need to be off the table with these things. So yeah. uh, I definitely do not uh, sort of stand, stand there and, and wave that white flag at all, yeah. Fascinating one to see as it continues to play out. Great to have you on and, and really appreciate your perspective. Thanks, Maxine. Thanks so much, Beverly.